So for our hyperbolas, we have, let's kind of go through the characteristics. So we already kind of talked about the definition of hyperbola. Let's just kind of go through them again, um, and so we can get a little bit better idea. So where we have a, um, the, the vertices, and then we have a center. And remember, the center is going to be right in between your two vertices, and it's also going to be the center of your two foci. Right? The distance between your two foci is going to be on your center. This is what we call the transverse axis. Okay? Transverse axis. It's kind of like the major axis of an ellipse. All right? um, notice, ladies and gentlemen, remember, this distance is A, and this distance is C. Just like when we had an ellipse. Remember ellipse, the distance from the foci to the center was C, the distance from your, a, your vertice to your center was A. It's the same thing. Just notice now that A is smaller than C, right? It's always going to be that way, right? Rather than an ellipse, A was always larger than C, okay? Um, and this works if we have a, a vertical transverse axis as well. This is a horrible graph. Let's read that one. So you have your foci, vertice, vertice, and center. All right? So now what we're looking at this, you can see there is a couple different characteristics, all right? Um, first of all, let's go back and we, we talked about subtraction, right? The definition of your hyperbola is now going to be the difference of those two distances of your point. So the formula, we know that our center is going to be h minus k squared, and we're going to know we're going to have y minus k squared, and it's going to equal 1, and that's going to be the same case, y minus k squared minus um, x minus h, x minus h squared. Okay, but now in ellipse, remember you was adding those two, right? You always added them, right? So in a hyperbola, what do you think you're gonna do? Since we talked about the definition is subtraction of the two points, so you think in the formula with an ellipse, it was the addition of the two points, so the formula that we added, hyperbola, the definition is subtracting the two points, so in the definition, or in the formula, you think you were gonna to want to? Multiply. Correct, thank you for your sarcasm. So, no, no what we're going to do is subtract. Well, if you're adding, right? If you add in the definition and then add in the formula, now we subtract in the definition, so you'd want to subtract in the formula. All right, yeah. right? Just, following, just following the kind of process. All right? Now, the next thing is we need to kind of be consistent a little bit. We knew that A plus B is the same thing as B plus A, right? Does it matter? No, it doesn't matter what you add, right? However, does it matter if you add, or I'm sorry, if you subtract a minus b and b minus a? Is, that a, is there a difference in that? Yes. Of course there is, right? So with subtraction, we gotta be very careful. We always, with our definition, right? Because our constant can change. If we want to subtract one, 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 if our definition of hyperbola is the difference between two distances from the foci to a point, if we change which, which distance we subtract from the other one, then we're going to have a different constant. So what you guys want to make sure is we're always going to be subtracting a squared from b squared. So then you might say, well, if a squared is always minus b squared, how do we know if it's going to be a vertical or a horizontal transverse axis? Well, notice there is a little difference in these, in these two equations. Here, remember we always talked about when on an ellipse, it was always a major axis when your a, a squared, was under the x, right? Because A was always your major axis, right? Here, our, when our A is under our X, that means our transverse axis is going to be horizontal. Okay? It's not a major and a minor axis. It's now going to be a transverse axis. Okay? Over here, you now notice what I did is I rewrote the X's and the Y's. So now, when my A is under my Y, it's going to be a vertical transverse axis. I just want you guys to understand when it ellipses, it was always the major axis was always your larger number A. Here, A and B, B can be larger than A. All right, you just we need, just need to make sure whatever your A and your B are, you're always subtracting A minus the B. But we're not dealing with the major and a minor axis anymore. We're just dealing with one transverse axis. Yes. I thought you said the A was always going to be bigger than the B. When we're dealing with ellipses, 
I didn't say it always had because you could have a circle where they're equal to each other, right? However, when you're dealing with an ellipse, yeah, if you have your A and then your B, your A was a larger than your B, unless it was a circle where they're equal to each other. But this is not the case. We're not comparing A and we're not comparing two distances. Here now we have travels away from each other. So all we need to be concerned about is A squared minus B squared. And then the only difference to know is if it's going to be vertical or horizontal, is it's vertical when you have your still when you have your A under your Y, and it's horizontal when you have your A under your X. Okay, so that relates a little bit to each other. But yeah, as far as looking at what is bigger, you're not saying, oh, since A is bigger, then it's ma major. No. If A is under your X, if you're doing the, the, if you're doing pretty much your A under your X, then it's horizontal. Okay? Yes? What if the numbers are filled in? How would you know? Like, what if you don't It's always A minus B. So I don't care what this number is. If this is 1 minus 10, no. it's always A squared is 1 and B squared is 10. So, like, what if your X and Y's are filled? Well, you're not going to have, we don't, X and Y represent all the points, so we're, we don't fill those in. Oh. Right? Yeah. So that's where you'd uh, uh, be careful with that. So does everybody understand that? Got it? Okay. Now, there is a couple additions that we need to make. So that was just your standard formulas. I have one more question. Yes. Um, you gave us what 